Dr. Eugene Gibson Sr., the pastor of the uh, Mission of Faith Baptist Church in Chicago, was my father. Um, God, he rests in heaven now. I remember the first time that he heard me preach. It was on September 14th, 1997. Uh, it was my first, my trial sermon. And he said, after I finished preaching with tears in his eyes, he said something I'll never forget. He said, the average preacher starts out by preaching as their pastor for about five years. Then they begin to preach like their favorite preacher because they're trying to branch out. It's not until your 11th year of ministry that you find your own voice. He said, son, today you've been preaching 11 years. It blew me away because I didn't understand what a preaching voice was. I didn't understand what having your own style meant. I didn't know how important it was. But now, of course, as a teacher of preaching, I hear, I see students that come in and they are struggling to find two things that I want to talk about here. They are struggling to find their homiletical voice and their homiletical mind. If Philip Brooks is correct that the preaching is the communication of the gospel through personality, the inference is that it's your personality. It's who you authentically are. God called you. Yeah, that's right. God called you. And when God called you, God knew what God was doing when God called you. So God wants to hear your voice. How can you be authentically you and proclaim the word of God? How can you learn your voice and then fall in love with your voice to the point that you're not embarrassed about it? Again, preaching is naked. So to get up there and show who you really are is very tough because it's very tough. <laughs> As a result, we don't like to do that. Most of us are not courageous enough to be who we are. So we, what we do is we practice being someone else. And if imitation is the highest form of flattery, it's also the quickest form of suicide. Because time you want to be somebody else, you, in essence, are killing who God made you to be. It's not just vocally how you sound, but it's also the message that you preach. You need to be known for some type of message that you preach. You need to be known for how God used you. That's called your preaching voice. It is that voice that God has uniquely given you so that you might communicate his gospel to the people, be it 10 or 10,000. You know what you sound like. People know what you sound like. When I stand at the sacred desk, people who have heard me before know what they're getting. That's why the people show up at my church. They know what they're going to get. They know. Now, how did I develop that? I'm glad you asked. This is the voice is what Dr. Frank Thomas, my mentor, told to me. He said, find three or four preachers that you absolutely love. Boil their preaching down to one reason you love it and then become mix them in together in a blender and become that. I'll tell you who I picked. I picked the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright because of the social content. He has something to say to the masses about the condition of the lost, the last, and the least. I picked Dr. Frank Thomas, my pastor, because he has a unique depth of eye and look at the text. I picked the Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglass Haynes III, Freddie Haynes, because of his pulpit flair. Fred, nobody can say what Freddie says like Freddie says it, and I wanted to have that. But the last person I picked is the Reverend Dr. William Houston Curtis, Bill Curtis, pastor of Mount Ararat Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His pulpit presence, not prowess and all of that, but his ability and confidence to stand there and trust his work. I'm a manuscript preacher like, like, like some of you are. And I, I had to learn how to stand there and trust the work without doing any tricks to make people shout. I had to stand there. And that's what Bill Curtis gave me to stand there and trust the work to find my voice and say, it's okay. That's what you need to do. You need to learn your voice and then begin to love your voice. Not that you hate other voices, but you learn your voice and you begin to love your voice. If, it, if, there's, if there's not a news story in my preaching somewhere, if there's not a, 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 a social event in my preaching somewhere, somebody's going to say, what's Dr. Gibson doing. That's different than he. What, what do people say about you when they hear you preaching? Do you have a voice that people know is authentically what you sound like? This is the content that I use. This is what is important to me in my preaching. Also, homiletical mind. Homiletical mind is just having an eye and ear and mind for preaching that you're able to carve something into a sermonic shape, as Dr. Frank Thomas would say, uh, carve it into a sermonic shape that it can give the gospel the best chance to be heard. How do you carve things? You, you've done it before driving down the street. Oh, that'll preach because you saw something. You're able to see the salvation story in a movie. You're able to see that God will make a way somehow, won't he will, in, in something in a song. You're able to know that God is still God, even when you're looking at something that's not seemingly God-like, but you have uh, I, you have a homiletical mind. When you put that homiletical mind 
against or with, excuse me, that 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 strong, that strong, authentic voice. People will flock to hear you, not simply because of who you are, but how God is authentically using your gifts, your talents and even your voice to change a whole generation, to bless the lives of people. Most of all, to bring glory to his name. Those are the things that are important, especially when you're being authentic. There's something that you can preach that I can never preach, but there's some stuff that I can preach that may, you might not be able to, to speak on. But the reason we do that is because we become authentically us. Beloved of God, let me simply say this to you. Do not be scared to be who exactly you are. God called you. God knew what he was doing. God wants to use you because of and even in spite of yourself. And if you allow God to use you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has for you if you authentically be yourself. Keep preaching.